please welcome our special guest for to, uh, for today evening mr nandan sen gupta mr nandan nandan sen gupta is the college ambassador for india cambridge marketing college and founder and director of esk network and nsg portal he has wide marketing experience in b2b technology marketing and project ma management and as a marketing consultant he uh, and as a marketing consultant he has been associated with multinational companies from the usa canada germany italy the netherlands japan australia and india he has spent 14 years of his career in india before moving to the uk in 2004 His current activities include digital marketing, web applications, and launching a UK-India business interface for education, skill, and knowledge products. Welcome, sir. It's a great honor to have you here. Please, you can take forward. Thank you very much. Um, this is indeed a privilege to be able to come and speak in front of this esteemed gathering. Thank you very much. i thank mr chopra for this opportunity so i will um start by sharing my screen so just give me a second can you see my screen yes sir yes sir okay yes sir excellent excellent thank you very much so i'll just request everyone to kindly mute their microphones because you know we can that way keep it keep the noise down <clears throat> if anyone has a question feel free to ask me either by raising your hand or better still you can just push your space bar down which will unmute your mic momentarily put the question in and then release your space bar so or at the end of the presentation we can always um do some sort of question and answer session for a few minutes so with this allow me to proceed now i understand that there are a lot of students in this gathering today so possibly i'll have to let them know that maybe there are terms there will be terms which may not be familiar to you but don't lose heart if there is any such thing you can ask me or you can contact me later i'll try to explain everything but within the short period of time it will not be possible for me to explain each and every basic terms but not knowing the basic basic terms is perfectly all right so you can ask me the question if you don't know anything about it just just ask me <clears throat> um i would like to welcome the vice chancellor of macau as well professor moitra i can see you <clears throat> good afternoon good afternoon so shall i start yes yes okay with everybody's permission i'm starting uh digital acceleration in marketing post covid scenario so it is an interesting topic i have been speaking on digital things for quite some time but post covid and that got me thinking that what is covid covid is a disruption nothing else so basically uh, this brief short one hour presentation will be divided into certain parts number one part for the first part is about how we react to any disruption so to say any disaster or disruption a very small sorry is there anything sorry is it uh, okay yeah i'll carry then um then there is a very basic understanding on business value addition model value chain model then we will go on to the disruptions pre covid and post covid so let me start with this so that is how we actually handle the disruption process this is how the disruption process flows through our mind through our society through our activities first when it affects us what does it actually affect if we if we look at it uh, if we look at it uh, very very objectively then we will see that it actually affects our standard day to day activities any pattern 
any kind of predictability of course safety all these things are affected now when i say predictability that is extremely important in terms of business because any business would love to know what they'll be doing in precise terms in six years i'm sorry six months of six months of time or one year of time and depending on that predictability a business will like to proceed and plan their actions but if the predictability is severely disrupted as it is uh, right now the current situation i mean then it is a problem then obviously the initial reaction will be denial it will be all right very soon that is what we all used to think initially uh, but it doesn't get that uh, that okay at, at least not in case of disruptions like covid or sars such pandemics i mean so there are certain reactive actions reactions as we call it uh, so right now in the uk where i live i can see the reactions from the government you know they they are trying to push in money into the system they are trying to support uh, the businesses they are trying to support the health system with lot of things but since all of those are reactions it couldn't have been planned before it's very difficult to effectively implement it within a limited time frame with a limited resource and especially under a disastrous situation that's what happening all over the world so some people those who understand this disaster flow or disaster characteristics they try to actually foresee what kind of problem there will be when a disaster strikes and they try to take some proactive actions like you know some of the countries did in case of covid like germany they started testing um like romania they 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 just bottled down their borders as soon as the covid was uh, you know in picture in in newspaper or south korea so these are the reactions and after the reactions we see some recovery there are course corrections restarting or in case there is a basically there is a die down of operation you may have to do a completely fresh new start now the thing is if we go on to after after understanding this um, flow of um, disruption process if you go at the end of it we see that there are three things that happen number one a, a lot of struggle by everyone at individual level at business level at organizational level everywhere there are some innovation in some cases so uh, there are some innovations where people just try to find a way out of it and they do something nobody knows what that thing is nobody used to know initially what that thing should be but something some some people some way find a way that is innovation and some people survive now some people don't survive as well as the disruption goes on some people adapt some innovate and some even evolve come out of it with a new a way of life new solutions to old problems and things like that like we did you know when we came up with all these online seminars and online study procedures we not only innovated but but we evolved if you consider the situation in india uh, not in india in, in in the whole world so to say uh, online classes were there but it was not predominantly the notion of study but it is right now so we evolved now obviously those who couldn't adapt they extinct they, they don't survive some even after adapting survive or just have the breathing time before going down again those who innovate they get another chance to survive of course but unless you really evolve and and find out a new way of surviving it is very difficult to flourish so with this understanding we are getting into the business understanding of this disruption situation i'm sorry i am i'm making a bit of a haste because the time is very limited uh, maybe in some other time um, we would be able to uh, discuss this on in much detail right so next thing before i get into the business process let me uh, allow this thing to come into picture 
this value addition model. Now, I perfectly understand that there are certain senior professors and some corporate executives who understand this, but there are students and for them, please allow me to explain it. Otherwise, it will not be very easy for them. Now, what is value addition? Value addition is a simple process. Whenever you start with something uh, and you do something in between and end up with something else, you add some value to your raw material and get a finished product. Like when you, uh, let's say you make roti. So when you, when you make chapati or roti or roti as we call it, we take some, um, you know, atta or in case of puri, we take some flour. And that thing is being added with water and your labor. Those things are the value addition element and of course time. And you do something with this and you get the finished products. Now in business also, we bring in the raw material into the business process. And then there are certain elements of value addition which go into the whole process and we come up with a finished product. Now in this particular uh, chart, this chart is called value chain model. This was suggested by a very famous management guru. Uh, his name was Michael Porter. <clears throat> a lot of people know about it. You can search it on the internet. Now Porter said, that when you bring in some raw material, right at this point, your value chain starts. Because those who are supplying you raw material, those who are bringing in the raw material as you know your truck driver, those who are delivering those things to some other factories, everyone is adding value to the process. Even, even your technology department, those who are researching or making quality control assessments, even your human resource department, those who are training your, your personnel who are doing all these jobs, everybody is adding value. And after adding all the values, when we come to a finished product and value addition costs, there are ways to measure and uh, you know, determine those value addition costs based on everyone's time and salary and everything. Then we add some profit margin and get the market value of this product at which we sell it to the customers. So these, in this value chain model, if you look, you will see that there is a marketing and sales department. So what exactly do they do? How do they add the value, add value to the whole service, whole, whole process, I'm sorry. Now, this is what they do. They monitor the market, they map the market, they map the customers. So they have the marketing knowledge. They have their product knowledge over here. They understand the customer and the market so they can select a market properly. They can understand the customer's tendency to buy their product, which in other words, loyalty, buy their product repeatedly, I should say. And the strategic relationships with each and every stakeholder, that is relationship with customer, relationship with your product supplier, that is raw material supplier, relationship with your dealer, your franchise, your training department, everyone. So with all this, the marketing department's job is to try and create a demand in the market. And how are they going to do it? Because there are so many products in the market. They have to actually create some sort of differential advantage associated with their product. Now, what is a differential advantage? It, this is the advantage that your product can claim against the, difference, against the difference that it is offering to you as a customer over its competitors. So I'll give you an example. For example, I'm just taking company names, but that does not mean that one company is better than the other. It's just, for example, let's say Sony Television and uh, Television X. Uh, so when someone goes to buy 
a television, they have some preference over some brands because their perception about the brand is that, that there is a difference between these two brands. This brand is slightly better. That, that amount of advantage that is being perceived by the customer is being termed as differential advantage. Sometimes the differential advantages are tangible, understandable, Sometimes those are quite abstract. Those of you who, who, who can recall the Onida advertisement, Neighbors Envy Owner's Pride, at that very time, it was not a differential advantage exactly, pride, but a perception was being generated in their customer's mind that having Onida actually lifts you up in the social ladder. So, just because there were all the TVs with all good qualities, and of course, Anita was a good TV, still is probably, I don't know. So uh, these differential advantage or the perception about the differential advantage has to be created honestly and effectively. So that's the marketing uh, value driver's job. I'm sorry, marketing department's job. So to be able to do this, the marketing department has to always collect data about the market and the customers. And they will have to communicate to the customer and to the market based on their understanding of the customer and the market. Now, classically, when it happened, uh, you know, let's say 20, 30 years back, at that very time, it was very simple, rather. When we marketers, used to do some market research based on some sample, framed up some idea as to what kind of products customers will like, what are the customers' likings, dislikings. Accordingly, we used to create the marketing communication and marketing activity, advertisements, bombarded the customers with those in uh, generally the mass media. So, and after that, people, or like customers or prospective customers were made aware that there is a product. The next step was, you know, to create the desire with, within them so that they can buy this product. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, awareness and then to create the interest in them and then the real desire to buy my product. And then we waited for some action. We call it AIDA model. We initially, we started to make the customers aware of our product, then creating interest, creating desire, and then, then we want them to buy. And that is action. At each and every level, some customer went out. They, you know, some prospective customers went out of the loop. That is why this thing looks like a funnel. It, it, it is also called a sales funnel. So... <clears throat> Now, this, this whole AIDA thing was based on mass understanding of market and customer and mass understanding of the, uh, I'm sorry, mass design of the advertising media and advertising communication. So now, this is the old thing. Now, before this COVID disruption, some disruption started to take place as well. As you all know, the digital disruption what happened now before the digital disruption took place uh, this mass communication thing was a communication only from the marketers or the product manufacturers but in digital world when the digital disruption started this thing started happening where there is this fantastic thing like www world wide web it came into being and initially, that was one-way communication. But then, after some time, it started getting both-way communication platform. It is a communication platform these days where actually the customers have every right and independence to leave their comments, to express their impression, to express what they want, and provide reviews and eventually the customers are actually influencing other customers so initially when we used to 
go through the mass marketing uh, unidirectional advertisement channel, we did not have the problem of customers speaking out their mind openly and publicly. Now we do, but we did not also have the advantage of understanding each and individual, each individual customer's mind, which we have right now. So this disruption actually started to change people and you know business people and think how to cope up with this. You know, this thing started before. This is the digital, you know, digital change, digital disruption that we talk about. And this thing started well before COVID. Now, when the companies uh, started to look into the thing, the first thing they wanted to know was that where are the customers actually moving? Initially, the customers were in the society and they were in the shops when they, when they came to buy or you know, in case of B2B, they came to buy at the point of sales, which were uh, being discussed and all that things happens over there. But right now, customers are moving over internet. You cannot really get hold of them and convince them or influence them. They are getting influenced by many other things. So how do I know where they are moving? They are moving on different platforms and different devices. Now, the, this, this business companies started to take notice of the devices. And, you know, according to a recent study, can you see this whole thing? Yeah, I'll just, according to the recent study, device per person in 2003 was 0 0.08, which in 2020 is expected to be 6.58. Now, I will give about half a minute here, give you some time to think about it, how this 6.58 or let's say six is coming through. And if you want to challenge me that how could it be possible, I am very happy to answer that challenge. Now, can you agree that most of you are actually having so many devices? I'll just, you know, take a pause here for half a minute. Please feel free to unmute your microphone and let me know. Do you agree this a number of devices per head? It is true or not? Anyone? No, sir. Don't agree. Yes, sir. Okay. So, how many devices do you think you do have? Sorry, I don't know your name. Uh, I'm, I'm just, you know. <laughs> okay, sir. So I think I have right. only two devices. Uh, what are those? So one is, means I using I'm using a uh, smartphone, and another one is PC. Okay. Another one is PC, right? So do you think most of the people will have these two devices only, or more devices? Basically, I think so. Maybe three, but not more than three. Okay. What is the third device is that device that you can think of? You said maybe three. So what is the third device? Laptop, tablet? Hello. Hello. What is the third it could, device? It could be smartwatch or an iPad or... Exactly. Exactly. Smartwatch, iPad, uh, smart TV, smart television. Yes. Sir. Okay. And there could be more. Some people these days have Fitbits. These are all smart devices. Some of you have something called Eco. Do you understand? Do you, do you recognize Eco? Yes, sir. Similar to Alexa. <laughs> Alexa, yeah, right. So, the Amazon uh, the, device. Yeah, of course. The device name is Eco. So, see, we already have come down to six instruments. And I can name another six where these home automations, I'll come to that later home automations are concerned. There are so many smart devices these days and people are, if not actively going onto that devices, but they are always there. When you have your eco, Amazon can always monitor you and eco's microphone is on and all the sound bites are going to the uh, Amazon's third party sound analyzer where they can hear you. I'll come to that later. So 
more or less, I, I, I do agree that some people may not have 6.5, some people may have two or three, but generally, especially globally, 6.58 is a very real number. Why you include all the smart instruments which can be connected to the internet. So, sorry. So the next thing is this, this is, um, uh, a famous person, Mr. Terry Nicklin, my colleague, he's a tutor in Cambridge Marketing Colleges. He first gave me this particular slide. This is to show you that at any instant, all those platforms in, on, on, on the internet, how many people do they have? See, Twitter, at any given instant, it's a snapshot of a moment. Twitter is having this many tweets. YouTube is ha having this many video watched. And obviously that can give you an idea that how many people are traveling, roaming onto the internet at the time, at, at any given time. Now, now think about one thing. That is when I was saying that when we used to study the market, took um, some impression, right now the whole market is over here. And we can actually capture each and every individual's emotions, perceptions, and thinking if they give us the opportunity, if they give us, uh, you know, their, their choices, I can grab that from internet, then I can probably map them in what they are doing. As a marketer, I would very much like to do that. When a person starts from, uh, if, you, if you remember the AIDA thing, that's a buying sales funnel or buying cycle. Now, when a person starts from A and go to the final A, that's a customer journey. Now, if I want to map this journey, <clears throat> 20, 20 years back, it was very simple. People used to look at advertisements or take some advice from friends, go to the shop, uh, by this thing, that was the normal procedure. Right now, they go on to various websites, what they do these days. Let's say this is the customer's journey these days. This again, this is taken from SAP, that is the software SAP, um, SAP's uh, cell journey training material. So these days, when a customer starts to uh, think of buying something, they started the awareness over here. See, and then they go through lots of things, social searches, web searches, they do their own research, they go to some print material like, you know, newspapers or reviews. They, they go to, this is a secondhand uh, car buying cycle, basically. So it has got this insurance thing as well. But they go to friends, they, they go to Instagram, they go to many influencers, so to say. So if we can actually capture this journey for each individual, which looks almost impossible, but let me assure you, it is not impossible. Then we can actually collect the data that will help us to communicate to that, to that particular customer effectively according to his or her choice or likings, which Amazon does. When you search for something, the next day you get, you know, your browsing history is this, and we think you will like all these things. So you get similar items to choose from. So each individual's mind mapping is becoming important. And that, that is a change that was happening in the marketing world, even before the COVID. It started happening during last decade, I should say. And during the last three, four years, that has increased quite a lot, that activity. And <clears throat> in this disruption, the marketing departments of each and every organization has come to an understanding that these are the highlights of this disruption. I am still in pre-COVID era. I'll come to post-COVID very soon. So there are new types of customers. Buyer behavior cannot be generalized anymore. New competitors, obviously, because you know you can jolly well open up a website and start selling your products. So there are very new competitors. Different channels of distributions. Amazon is showing us that. They don't have to send anything unless it's from 
Amazon's own store. There are many virtual companies, new segments, social media. So customer and market is totally dispersed and getting the information to be able to market effectively is the challenge that is getting the data. So for this, already the marketing procedure started evolving, right? It is the normal evil, sorry, it is the normal evolution that started happening since 1960 to, you know, till date. Probably all of you or many of you know the 4P STP, that is segmentation targets, promotion or position, 7P, 4C, and probably some of you don't know the M3. Now, then again, if anyone has a question, please do ask me what are those models I will answer, but right now I'm not really explaining on this except M3, because M3 is the most um, recent thing. <clears throat> M3 is a very simple thing. It's called uh, <laughs> modern marketing, a uh, modern marketing management. That is M M M. Now M three is basically just a name, which gives you a model that is based on these four things: strategy, analysis, planning, and execution. Now these things came into being because because of the change and disruption in the market. And when uh, these broad divisions are there, like strategy, analysis, planning, and execution, the strategy is actually to find out what kind of product we are going to um, uh, market, what kind of price we are going to do. Analysis is, you know, I have already spoken about the data, and that data has to be analyzed to generate the insight based on which the action plan, marketing action plan, will be implemented. Then obviously planning and execution. Now each broad category has different section within it. I'm not deliberating on the sections. I'll be very happy to in some future seminar. But today my point is to show where the accelerations in digital world are taking place because of COVID. And by this slide, what I'm trying to show is that pre-COVID, some changes started happening and post covid those changes some of those changes will be accelerated that's what i'm going to show you so in this case i can i can tell you you see under the broad category one is market orientation market customer orientation customer insight now to be able to obtain the customer insight we need to have billions of data which we call big data these days. And I'll, I'll come to that, how it's been happening. Again, uh, I will leave planning for the time being because planning hasn't changed much, except it's, it's, more, it, it's got more intricate, but the working principle is same. But, but in the execution, you have a real change, which is uh, basically been, could be, which could be seen in the data and measurement part because you are collecting data, you are analyzing and you are making the customer insight. Accordingly, you are making a plan and executing it. And then you have to measure the efficiency of your system. Now you have done all this after that. Have you done it right or have you done it wrong? Which is the advantage of this disrupted procedure and the innovation thereafter which can let you actually measure very efficiently. So, uh, it, yes, hello, is there a question? No, okay, I'll carry on. So data and measurement and customer insight, these two are the areas we will be speaking a little more on right now, because these are going to be really, really accelerated. Rest, fine. So now we are coming to post-COVID scenario. Okay, now in the post-COVID scenario, we already have seen how a disruption works. We already have seen that pre-COVID scenario, some other disruption called digital disruption took place. And for that matter, the marketing functions all over the world started to change, which they would have had to do otherwise uh, post-COVID. But 
thankfully they started to do that before COVID. Now post COVID, when we are looking at the whole thing, there will be certain assumptions. Number one assumption is the thing is, you know, the life is not really returning to the previous normal. We have to accept that. Changes will be heterogeneous, global, and fractal. Now, allow me to explain this fractal thing. Maybe not everyone is accustomed with the term fractal. Fractal is a concept where, you know, um, in a particular world, in a particular population, there could be certain segments. And in one segment, there could be some changes. In the next segment, the changes could be different. In the segment next to that, the changes could be even more different. And after a few segments, we can see that the change that we mentioned in the first segment had come back. So fractal is basically repeatability or, or you know, the way some happenings repeat, get repeated in different segments but without apparently a very visible pattern. That is fractal. For example, if there are, you know, in terms of marketing, if there are certain demands in, uh, let's say, Northern India in summer, I, I can give you an example, actually. So um, sometimes, long, long, long time back, in, in Northern India in summer, suddenly a top loading washing machine was sold cheap one uh, you know it, the the sale got uh, got to a very high level so now obviously the sales managers uh, were very interested in understanding why that was happening so that they can act, implement the same situation everywhere else so it was researched and it was seen that those washing machines are were simply used as lassi making machines in in summer because top loading you know put a lot of stuff and do the value addition get the lassi now that was a change which was a very localized pattern now had there been other areas where this kind of summer was apparent then these particular happening could have been repeated. And had it been so, then I would have said that this is a fractal scenario. So those things happen. Something is happening here. That same thing is happening in Russia or maybe Brazil. And the marketers are attempting to solve the situation or address the situation accordingly because they have the learning from the previous fractal area. So that is in such a situation post covid that will be very important because the changes in the world will be very heterogeneous it will never be homogeneous indeed and of course marketing and peer will be in a frontal role customer facing role so that is why marketing and peer will have to have a way to contact the customer to get into touch uh, with the customers and that is to say, since, since the customers are in home isolation or in lockdown, you cannot just go to the customers. So why not just accelerate the thing that already started under digital disruption, which is data capture? Now, how are you going to do that? Let's see. This is a very typical European or American home where a person with his mobile phone with lots of apps on it can control everything from his sofa or from his, you know, from the point where he or she, he or she is. <clears throat> right. S sorry, is there a question? Okay, yeah, thanks. So, now this phone which this customer is having is connected to the internet. It has one particular identifying number and against that number, all these data are being monitored by all the relevant companies. And there are certain companies who tie up with those app owners and they put their program in it, 
they collect the data and then then they sell the syndicated data to other companies as well you won't even know that those companies are in your mobile phone right from the morning when you start and open your mobile phone to do the latest whatsapp or you know the earliest whatsapp in the morning or to check on your facebook account you start generating data and whenever you do anything on the internet even if you don't do on the internet you move from your house to your office to your institute and since your uh, phone is connected to the internet your movement your map is also creating a data and over a month or a year that creates patterned data predictable data set from which from which the owner of those data can actually generate insights and generate some actionable plan if they know that you go to this shop every time every friday then probably they could do something about it if they have their product at this particular shop this is a very basic example of course but these things happen so basically this was happening which is being accelerated whatever you do the companies the organizations the marketers are collecting the data now if you if you ask me how are they collecting the data not only through the mobile phone there are many other ways um so so that could be discussed even even when you know the websites encourage you for your convenience that you can log into their website through your google id that means they are getting into your google account and they are collecting data as simple as that they are providing you you some sort of convenience and you are providing them with data so these things keep on happening and this is getting accelerated with an added twist post covid that twist as i said the the uh, you know the changes post covid will be heterogeneous what i meant was that the demands for each and every product will now be different in different countries not in product services even in one class of product there will be different kind of requirement for different brands because people are scared now people want to be really really sure that the brand they are using is safe now when you are going to buy face mask these days you want to buy a brand which you can depend on if you want to buy a package you know packed food food uh, that packed food has to be coming from a particular manufacturer who has a very nice sterile process that is safe from health hazards like covid and post covid scenario not only getting the customers data you will not be very easily able to reconnect with your suppliers in some business you need raw material to produce your product sometimes you need the finished product to sell it to the customer so at those points for the covid you will see that there will be huge problem because some of the small companies they already have gone out of business so you will have to really find out new people or develop a way around it so collect, collecting data could be accelerated but these heterogeneous unforeseen scenario could be addressed with some difficulty now if if we really want to address those uh, this heterogeneous scenario we need to know very very precisely where exactly are the demands and how much and what exactly is the demand how the customer is liking these days with digital marketing you really don't have to depend on um print advertisement or tv advertisement although these things are there but that is not how the marketing is done these days it is like mostly though for the customers who are on the internet they get totally individualized customized advertisement made for them so if you can work out the customers by data you can also work out your um 
upstream vendors or downstream vendors through collecting data and that is again possible through the data channels these days and i'm going to show you just a you know structure of this thing definitely i cannot go into the details with this now all these data so far i have been speaking about data so you can imagine it's billions of data points billions and billions and billions of data points so obviously it's not humanly possible to analyze everything to visualize everything to to generate insights and that is where our artificial intelligence analytics these two things are coming and some people are um, probably not clear about artificial intelligence uh, you know about the difference between artificial intelligence and machine learning these two are different artificial intelligence is a kind of analytical power logical analytical power and machine learning is you know getting this analytical power improved by learning from the mistakes that the software is doing so all these things are these days basically built in into the softwares that the marketers are using based on data and obviously cloud because you know we cannot uh, have all this data with us the clouds are much larger servers for data and it's over there so the infrastructure and fuel are nothing but the you know hardware and data and 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 softwares as well and once we collect all the data from the customers there is a data platform where we actually validate the data clean the data pick up the right kind of data everything is done by the softwares these days but of course yeah uh, overseen by humans and then this analysis and predictive intelligence are coming and when i say marketing automation that means according to the analysis when certain um action map action plan a are being suggested by this particular platform this software then those actions actually could be executed by machine itself see there is this advantage post covid that if you have this marketing automation you really don't have to go into the market and talk to the customer face to face you can reach them you can take their order you can even deliver them and these days ro with robots and drones deliveries are becoming simple as well and this whole thing is being i should say supervised and serviced by the analytics capability of a company which are basically softwares different platforms and softwares and you know there are big companies in this like sap and uh, IBM and Adobe, Adobe is Experience Cloud, which I will come to after a few slides and show you. Um, let me see how. You know. okay. Right. So um, with this, basically the acceleration in the acceleration will be in the areas of technology. And in these technology slide, artificial intelligence. Uh, predictive analytics those things are there these two things are a bit new to us these are taken from a Gartner report of 2018 cross device identification is very much required because if I want to target one particular customer and if that customer has on an average six devices I need to know that who I am targeting when the customer is on device one and when the customer is on device three and then again the device three might have three users because that could be a family laptop. So in a family, there could be three devices, I'm sorry, three users who could share this. So when I am doing this automated marketing, a particular marketing communication based on the software capability and data capture is going to predict that this particular user who is online right now, remember, they cannot see the face. They, in most cases, they don't know the name. They just know uh, an IP, internet protocol. Now the predictive software will say that this user with this IP, that is this particular laptop or mobile phone, is probably the user number two with 30% probability. Now based on that, it will either invest in a Google ad or it will not invest in a Google ad. So that kind of automation is now under, uh, you know, it, it's, it's prevailing. 
and multi-touch attribution also adds to XDID because you know if you if you buy something on internet, usually we don't buy it on my first trial. It's it's not like that we go to this particular item and we just buy it. No, rather we select it, put it in the basket, take sometimes take it out, sometimes save it for later, sometimes see a few others. So there are multiple touch points before on the AIDA model, before the final A, which is the final action. Before that happens, there will be multiple touches. And that multi-touch pattern will be different from each and every customers. And that is that data is also captured. So depending on the data from XDID and MTA and the data that have accumulated over years about a customer, that is his habits and likings, his emojis have been analyzed, everything. Depending on that, an automated marketing will go into action, basically. So when it does, um, sorry, I'll just show that first and then come back to this. When it does, this is a typical automated marketing platform from Adobe. We, we all know that Adobe is Photoshop. That's what it is famous for. But these days, <clears throat> Adobe is doing much more business in something called Experience Cloud, which is nothing but an automated marketing platform. Over there, they capture the data from the internet and they have a particular machine learning engine where they can uh, study the data automatically and they can create a profile for each and every customer. They even put a face to it. Sometimes the face is not accurate. Sometimes it is very close to accuracy, but that's not important. What important is that they create a very unique profile of the customer extremely accurately, fairly accurately, I should say, where their habits, likings, needs, requirements, seasonal requirements, their families, their friends, their habits, everything is there in that particular account. The customer doesn't know. And all of us have probably one or the other kind of account with some other company, if not Adobe. And depending on that, when a particular company is taking the Adobe Experience Cloud, hiring the Adobe Experience Cloud, cloud so to say, then depending on the company's product and marketing objective, they will see who are the matching customer profile who will be probably the buyers and accordingly some suitable content from the Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator and so on and so forth will be generated automatically again to the liking of the customers and it will go to the content pipeline and it will reach to the customer which is integrated with the company's ERP software and shopping cart. So this is basically the digital ecosystem which is accelerating and which will accelerate much more post COVID because the customers are now not available except over the internet. And um, I'll just take five minutes before concluding. There is something uh, which will really the highlights of the post COVID, COVID era where there are lots of anxieties and stress and insecurities and and it's a result of researches it's, it's not just you know being spoken casually now the companies those who can actually associate themselves with this and can address these things are doing better like a company who is known to be cautious about about the environmental ethics are expected to do better business, number one. Number two, to be able to capture more such things from the customers and, 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 and to, to be able to offer the customers more such thing. These techniques, these technologies, not techniques, these technologies are basically accelerating excessively after COVID. Sentinent technology is nothing but which is an AI based platform which can capture the perception or mood of the customer. Facial recognition, we all know. 
haptic technology, which also you know includes VR and yet yeah, to some extent, um, it, it it can capture uh, your emotions through touches. So VR, AR, sentient, haptic. These are to or not only to capture the uh, customers' uh, feelings and perceptions and uh, mind mapping. It can also be used to deliver the desirable customer experience, uh, you know, which which is expected to help the product to be marketed in a better sense. So, and with this, if you, if you just imagine the whole thing in um, coordination in tam tandem with the Adobe digital ecosystem, and and mind you, there are other digital ecosystems as well, not only Adobe. Adobe is just one of many. Then you can imagine the post COVID era, we are going to see lots of uh, acceleration in the digital space and forget about search marketing or search engine optimization. Those are only 5% to 10% of digital marketing now. Digital marketing is based on more perceptions, more uh, connecting to the customer in a much neuron level. So, and for that, we require data and in India, it's not a problem, not at all. It's the McKinsey data of digital India, which is very current. By 2002, 2025, there will be enough data to do all these things. So before closing, I would like to tell you something about a thing, as I said, neural. Now there is a proposition, uh, which is a neuro, which is called neuromarketing which is basically started like uh you know if you are if your brain is mapped and if your uh emotions could be mapped through uh this mri missions then possibly a uh, better marketing communication could be sent out to you and those experiments were done and it was proved that yes brain if mapped could be used as a much better data capturing source now you cannot just go to each and every customer and mri them that's not just possible so our very well-known uh, technology innovator elon musk has come up with something called Neuralink. he is suggesting that a chip could be put under or you know behind your ear or in your hair somewhere which will collect all the neuron neuron signals and accordingly, that will send out a uh, you know, better redefined uh, marketing communication to you. Now, there are lots of ethical questions. Neuralink has a website, you can have a look. There isn't much information on that, but they have done these experiments with mice and it's been successful. So probably um, they are going to go ahead. Maybe this, this thing which they are suggesting to put behind your ear, maybe, you know, maybe reduced in size. So this thing is happening. This is probably the most latest thing. And with that, I am coming to the conclusion. So uh, that is it. And with this, I just want to tell you this, with all this, I am, I'm, I'm very happy to answer your questions, but these are just to point out that what are the digital acceleration areas, but these presentation did not cover did not cover the details of those areas i did not have that opportunity but if there are opportunities in the future i'll be very happy to do that so with this i'm finishing it off um, I'm, I'm stopping um the screen share and going to the last slide where my contact details are there so anybody is very welcome to uh, get in touch with me and I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. So with this, I conclude uh, the session. Thank you very much. I'm open to questions. So that's it. Thanks. Thank you, sir, for a wonderful session. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so over to you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take questions if there is any. Hello, um, shall we? Uh, If there is no question, then we can possibly conclude the session. Can you hear me?
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I would I would ask um the I lead admin to take the decision or, or you know. Yeah. Have any questions? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Okay. So we can uh, end the session. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank thank my my sincere thanks to everyone. And you know, take care and stay safe. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you so and much. Feel, sir. feel free to contact me anytime. It's, it's sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, sir. Bye, bye, bye. So, um, Thank yeah. you. Okay. So I, I shall leave the meeting now, and uh, as I said. Thank you and my very best wishes. Okay. See you soon. Okay, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank Bye. you, sir. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye.